EPs twist with me. Come on, twist the EPs twist yeah. with me. Come on, twist the EPs twist with me. Do the EPs twist with me. Welcome to the EPs Bubblegum Show. Hi, Plastic EP here, and Wally, chewing bubblegum. How you going, Wally? Not bad. Well, we're going to talk about bubblegum music today, from the 60s. Now, the bubblegum era, just to tell you, is from 67 to 1972. That's correct. So, we're going to talk about the bubblegum bands, and the ones that we grew up with, and the songs that we grew up with. That's right. And we know you're a Monkees uh, supporter, and we we've come to a decision that the Monkees must have been the first band to be classed as a bubblegum band. Now, when we mean bubblegum band, I want to clarify that. The song, I'm a Believer, it made number one, Wally, on the 31st of December, 1966. And within three days, there's the record there, it was certified gold. Right. Now this song has got a... Um, and both sides of the Atlantic too. That's right. It was the first number one single to be number one in the US and number one in the UK. That's right. Because the marketing was so much on it, like the radio got behind it, the TV got, got behind it, show. and the Monkeys TV show helped. Yeah. And basically, that was a single. And as far as I'm concerned, this single had the bubblegum sound on it. Just point out the uh, Monkeys picture I've got here. And swinging around. So we, we agreed that that's the earliest bubblegum form of song. I believe so. Now the thing is, a lot of people claim that the Lemon Pipers, yeah. with their song A Green Tambourine, they think that's the first bubblegum song. Yes. But as I said, I believe this to have the first bubblegum sound. Now, to explain to you why, this song I'm a believer was actually produced by Jeff Barry. Right. This became the biggest selling song in 1967. But Jeff Barry went on to write Sugar Sugar with Andy King. Right. And he produced that song, and that was the biggest selling bubblegum song of 1969. 1969. Now, we know that the song was written earlier, and it was offered to the Monkees, and they rejected it, but had they recorded that song, that would have actually made them top-class bubblegum group. I would have said yeah. the ultimate bubblegum band. Yeah. But the thing with the Monkees is that they did so much music, they did a lot of, a lot of genres of songs. That's right. They did rock. They did pop. Yep. Mike Nesmith is credited with inventing country... Country rock, yes. Country rock. Yep. So anyway, that's the song um, Sheep for Sugar Sugar. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you the ultimate countdown yep. of bubblegum songs that I believe what I write yep. as the best top bubblegum songs of the era. Okay. Okay. Now, to go through a few of the... Uh, Albums, the true bubblegum sound, because they coined the word bubblegum in like 68. Mm. It was songs like Yummy Yummy, I Got Love in My Tummy, Chewy Chewy. That's my personal favourite, Chewy Chewy. Okay, I personally rate at number one, Yummy Yummy Yummy, as the number one bubblegum song of all time. Mm. That, and I come to that conclusion because it was very close between that and Sugar Sugar. I'll write Sugar Sugar at number two. And both Ohio Express, the band of the Chewy Chewy, and uh, Mountain Den Fruit Company, Company, they did the uh, Yummy Yummy. But uh, we had the same people in both bands, is that true? I believe so, and uh, Joey Levine, That's as far right. as I'm concerned, he's the voice of Bubblegum. And actually, he, he, his signature singing, his nasally uh, approach to singing, actually uh, put his rubber stamp on uh, both hits. And following that, there were more hits with that similar sound coming out. That's right. So that became sort of the, the bubblegum sound that we were so familiar with nowadays. Well, Chewy Chewy was written by Joe Levine and A. Resnick. Resnick, okay. So anyway, I'm going to give you my top five songs of the bubblegum era. Okay. As I said, number one, Yummy Yummy Yummy. Yep. Two, Sugar Sugar. Yep. Three, Chewy Chewy. Yep. Four, I put as I'm a Believer by the Monkees. And I'm only doing that because of the type of sound that it is. Because as I said, I'm a believer is the forerunner to the bubblegum sound. Okay. And at number five, 
I'm happy to put Indian Giver at number five. Okay. I'm just reading off a book here from what they believe had uh, bubblegum hits. They've nominated 98.6, Dizzy, Easy Come, Easy Go, The Groovest Girl in the World, I Think We're Alone Now, Raid in the Park and the Other Things, Simon Says, Sugar Sugar, Tracy, the Trala La Song, which is our favourite. That's the Banana Banana Splits in 60... Yes, yes. 68, I think it is. 68. We've uh, we've also have uh, uh, Yummy, Yummy, Yummy uh, as the last track. And uh, these books have actually put the uh, Bubblegum song in sort of like a category. They picked out songs that were out in the 60s, but they're saying that they're all related to Bubblegum. Now, the main thing here is that Bubblegum was American. We can say safely that that's true. We didn't have bubblegum in England. I mean, what British shit do you know that's bubblegum? I don't. We can't say. What we do know, though, is that there was a close tie between Hermits, Hermits, and the Monkeys as regards to uh, putting out hits, putting out some similar hits, and following a to- total trend towards bubblegum. One of the writers, Graham Goldman, from the uh, Hermits, Hermits team, who wrote many hits for them, became part of the bubblegum. Uh, he went to work for the uh, Kazan Kazanaz uh, group of the Brewer Building and was forced to write bubblegum hits. Kazanaz Kaz seemed to be the people who were producing. And uh, they looked like uh, they were running the show and they were bringing out the novelty uh, hits that were associated with bubblegum. They're the best known, basically, producers of bubblegum. That's right. And this album here, right, which is Kazanaz and Kaz singing Orchestra Circus, this to me, it's like a Sergeant Pepper of the bubblegum. Okay. This was meant to be all the bands put together and they're doing like a live show. Right, this is the whole That's time. what it was about. And this actual album is so rare to get now. I see. Right? I'll just go through some of the other albums. Yep. Here's um, Hit Explosion, Volume 3. Got a lot of bands on there. Buddha, Again. Buddha being the label and controlling the bubblegum uh, songs that were on there. That's right, here's another one. The very best of the Ohio Express, Cowboy Convention. Right? Simon Says is another forerunner, a major song. Baby. When that came out, that was based on like kids' nursery rhymes, and that was like the first song you sang. Because yeah. that came out first before all the other ones. And it became a big audience participation song for bands to uh, do uh, at functions, joining the crowd. That's the album, Australian release. See, it's got our store in the corner here. It says here it's also playable on mono, but it's actually the stereo version. And what was that sold for one ninety nine? Two dollars doesn't get you much. No. And the big hits here, Simon says, "May I take a giant step into your heart?" Right. Obviously, a different track to the Monkeys one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. That's totally it. different. Yeah, totally different. But uh, yes. So, so we understand that Graham Golden was forced to write for the Cousin as he wrote a very big hit uh, for the Bubblegum. It was called Sausalito. Now, Sausalito appeared on one of the Bubblegum albums. I've actually got the single with that on Buddha. I just want to show you. Yeah. Graham Golden wrote it. Yeah. Yes. I'll just show it to you now. Yeah. I've got it here. Here, Sausalito on the original Buddha label, if you can see that. And it's got the credit there. I've heard the... uh, Goldman. Yeah, Goldman, yes. I've heard the production on this, it's A1 production. It's a very good track for Bubblegum. I'll also show you the other ones if I can, right? Indian Giver. Flip side is Pow, Pow Wow. Who did that? That's 1910 Fruit Gum Company. Uh-huh. I'll just take it out so you can actually see the label a little bit better. Uh-huh. That's the original one. The Buddha label was the one that featured most of the Bubblegum tracks. That's right. Yep. I'll just show you the, um, some others here. Firebird with Chewy Chewy. That's your number. What's your number one song of the uh, Bubble Goom era that you rated? Yeah, that's Chew Chew. Chew Chew. Well, that's a single, Chew Chew, which is very, very hard to get now. Very hard to get. And uh, you've also got Rice is Nice by the Lemon Pipers. That was another hit. Uh, pictures of the band yet again. I don't know who Joey is in this band. Probably wasn't in the band. I don't know much about the Lemon Pipers. No, that's the Lemon Pipers. Anyway, as I said, here's Mercy. Another hit. So that basically covers your singles there. Here's the last one here. Simon Says, and it's on the Pine International label. And on the corner it says 1910 Fruit Gum Company. All this stuff is very, very hard to get. This is one of the rarest singles. 
Oh, that's a This one here, this is Goody Goody Gumdrops. That's the name of the EP. It's got Simon Says, Indian Gibber, 123 Red Light. And representing the packet of chewing gum as opposed to the bubble gum here. Yeah. I just want to see any tracks on that. I think that's actually got two tracks on one side. And it's an EP. Yeah, yeah, but it's got four tracks. It's an EP like us. That's right. <laughs> that's where we got the name EPs from. That's right. A 45. Okay. You know, with bubble gum music, all I'll say is, we're about to see a clip now called Hey Bananas, I think you're groovy. And that's another one we wrote, and I was lucky enough while I was in uh, Hollywood to do the video clip for that. So let's do that now. Hey Bananas, we think you're groovy. We think you're groovy. Hey Bananas, we want you groovy. We want you groovy. Drive your two buggies everywhere. Going crazy without a care. Hey, bananas, we think you're groovy. Hey, bananas, we think you're groovy. We love to watch you because you're a favorite show. Hey, now bananas, we think you're groovy. Hey, bananas, hey, bananas, we think you're groovy. Hey, Hey bananas, we think you're groovy. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. We think you're groovy. Hey bananas, we think you're groovy. like the monkeys were in, the monkeys had their own cards put out and I believe each card pack had a piece of bubblegum. Because everything was cross-marketing, what you've got to understand is, yeah. not only was it bubblegum that you bought the trading cards, we're talking about a thing that exploded, not only the music, mm. but you had the trading cards which I'll actually show you for the monkeys, but not only that, when you bought the trading cards, you actually got them like this. For example, oh yes, these are the original wrappers. Here's the original wrappers, and what happens is you've got a packet of cards with one stick of gum on it mm. at five cents. That's one wrapper. That's more of the monkeys wrapper. How many cards did you get? Five cards or four? Cards? I think it was actually four or five. I'm yeah, pretty sure it was five. Yeah. Also, you've got the monkeys flip movies. That was a little book that used to flip, and it was like watching a little movie. Right. Okay. Other than that, also want to say cross marketing with the bubble gum era. Mm. They've got cereal boxes, and on yes. the back of the cereal boxes in the US, you used to cut out a record, and you used to actually play it on a yes. stereo. And there, for example, is the Archie's one, and there's the Monkey's one, just to give you an example. And that basically had four tracks on it, but he played it at 33 mm. and a third RPM, and that also had four tracks on it. Well, the, the Archie's was uh, the ultimate controllable bubblegum band because they didn't really exist. They were taken from a comic, and uh, completely produced for money making venture. There's no argument with the band as opposed to having arguments with the monkeys over the musical direction. Material, yeah. the direction. And the, uh, the arch is fully controllable and they actually released Jingle Jangle and they released the Sugar Sugar single. That's the truck problem. driver. Truck driver, yes. But the Sugar Sugar made them the money or made the 
people who worked for them to money. Who was running the Archies at the time? Well, Archies was a, a Saturday cartoon show. Yep. And Don Kirshner was responsible for the music, so like he was for the start of the Monkees. Okay. So here's their albums, just to show you, yeah. right? That's the first album, I believe, of the Archies. It's called Everything Is Archie. Yeah. And uh, it's got Sugar Sugar on it, mm -hmm. right? That's very hard to find now. Very hard to find. Also, we've got the Archies here. Yeah. That's another album too. Very good. Now, going back to the bubble gum, I've just got to carry on from there. With the Ohio Express, this is a very, very hard album to find. And this is, I prize this is one of my best albums because what they've done is they've got a train behind it and they superimpose a picture of the actual band. Really good. Right? And that's really good. Mm. And it's got Yummy, Yummy, Yummy as the first track there. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. And right. it says a Super K production. Super K. Now that's the Casanas again. That's right. Produced that's by right. Jerry Catanas and Jeff Katz. Yeah, that's it. That was huge. Those are the ones that were running the show. Now getting back to the Saturday morning cartoons, yep. which is very important to talk about, you had like the Groovy Ghoulies, mm. you had the Archies, yes. and these yes. bands, they were coming out with bubblegum. Yes. Now I don't know if you know, but the Monkees, as soon as they finished in 68, yep. in 69 in September, they went straight to Saturday morning reruns. Ah. I don't know if you know that. No, Here's another band here, this has got bubblegum in it too. I see. That's the Hardy Boys. That was actually a cartoon, and they superimposed a band, like they used a, a real characters too. What year was that? That's as a band. 69. That one there, I believe, was 69. 69, okay. And the, their big hits, right, was Namby Pamby, My Little Sweet Pea, and songs like that are actually bubblegum. Yeah. And this has got a logo too. That's right. Different from the Monkees, mm -hmm. but that was a big TV show when it came out. With the Monkees, just want to tell you, in 69 here in Australia, this is the album that came out, right? This is the Monkey's Greatest Hits. There's no pictures on it, but I remember getting this as a birthday present. And the big song there, the first song was I'm a Believer. Now that's rare, that was 69. Also with I'm a Believer, the second album, More of the Monkeys, that's what it was on. And even uh, Japanese import here, this is hard to get now. The Monkey's Story, that's got I'm a Believer on it too. So that basically sums up the monkeys. That's right. Now with the Archies, just to tell you, this is a rear sleeve D. This came out, it's got sugar sugar on it. Okay. It's in the shape of a heart. Yeah, it looks very unusual. I don't think I've ever seen it. And that. it's a CD, but it's in the shape of an actual it's heart. A CD, I don't know. Oh my god, how I don't do want to touch it. How do you put that in the CD? But actually plays. <laughs> very, very Somebody unusual. Somebody put that out from New York. Very unusual, very unusual. And that's actually a collector's item now because it doesn't exist. Yes. And with our last two CDs here, this is a very good CD that I've got from Movie Play. Yes, Ohio Express in the uh, 1910 Fruit Game. It's got about 20 songs on it. That's one of my favourite CDs. It also contains Sausalito. And I noticed you picked this one up. Yeah, this was really a, this was a bargain, this one. Obviously uh, an unknown brand from the European market, but having uh, Ohio Express and Kazanaz Super Circus, which also pr produced albums, Lemon Pipers, uh, and um, they were all on there uh, for a bargain price. And speaking of bargain prices, in Australia we had a label called Majestic just prior to KTEL. They bought out the compilation albums containing bubblegum groups and popular groups of Australia. We have the... Uh, no, 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 Fruit Gun Company. Yeah. Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. Yeah, there's been a lot of... And he had Tommy James and the Shondells. Well, now, they've done some yes, bubblegum songs. I think... Uh, uh, I think we're alone now. Was That's a right. Very big hit for Tommy James and the Shondells. Money, money is another one. Yeah, money, money. I, I think, think we're alone now. Yeah, I think you'd throw that in there too. But uh, yeah, there's definitely uh, Paul Revere, the Raiders. We could say they were a little bit of a bubblegum that band. Well, I want to say something about them now, since yeah. you mentioned them. Yeah. And you were the one that told me this fact that I didn't know. Yeah. What happens is they did. I'm not your stepping stone. Released the song before the Monkees did it. That's right. That's right. They were offered, uh, obviously, the the writing team of uh, Boys and Heart. Boys and Heart were uh, distributing their songs until they found the uh, right medium to push them out, and uh, that's what gave the Monkeys their, their first early hits. Another rare song. Yeah. I'm just saying, a Monkeys cover. Yeah. Was Del Shannon doing She? Now that was something that I didn't know until I found out about the net, and you were actually able to find the CD that had that song. That's right. One thing I want to mention about these songs: these are Australian albums. Yeah. 
But the thing is, they tried to jam so many songs on one LP. There's 24 on both of them. Yeah, but what they did, Wally, on some of the tracks, yeah. they sound different from the 45 singles. You know why? Why? Because they actually sped them up or cut some songs right. less to actually fit them on the album. And that's why I couldn't understand why you hear some, some songs on here yeah. and hear the 45. And it's either different. It's either yeah. sped up or it's a shorter song. Right. So they could jam the tracks into the Makes LP. a lot of sense. Makes a lot Makes of sense. sense. Yeah, Makes a lot I figured that one out. Oh, that's very really good. So that's why they went to 20 hits later on. Four tracks yeah. on this. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to tell you, yeah. with the bubblegum music, I remember myself, right? I had a cousin in Campbell. Yep. And I remember the first time I was in the backyard and I had the radio blaring. Yep. And it could have been 3KZ. Mm. Play top 40 then. And Yummy Yummy, Yummy came on the radio yeah. and it was like something I've never heard before. Right. And that's the time when I was listening to songs like Pretty Flamingo yes, yes, yes. by Manfred Mann. Yes. And those songs, they stick in my head yeah. because they were the ones that were played on the uh, radio they're very so well, often. Very well produced songs too, the Bubblegum uh, songs. And you'll find that they were very snappy and crisp and uh, good production values. Now, Wally, I just want to say... Yeah. The EPs do a song called Let's Buy Some Bubble Gum. Yep. So we're actually going to play that clip now for the viewers. Oh, beauty. And that's one that we write together and we're proud of that. That's right. And so
We're we're doing eight bananas with Diggy Groovy. Yeah, that was a dedication to the Banana Splits. And we've had some communication with Banana Splits and uh, Ron Dante, who was the uh, singer for the Archies and also for the Cufflinks, who also had it with Tracy. So there's a lot of bubble gum that we're associated with and that we've tried to uh, communicate to these people about what the sound is all about and uh, how we're very interested in their uh, medium of music. Um, in the book, they describe novelty records as nursery rhyme songs, nursery rhyme rock. They put down Ohio Express, Lemon Pipers, Fruit Gum Company by using nursery rhyme type music to get the message across. And also those sugary food things. Sugary like food. honey. That's right. Like sugar. Mm. Things like that. So they're basically giving it a slurpy effect. Yeah, yeah. When I mean slurpy, I'm talking sugar slurpy. That's yeah, sugar slurpy. And of course, when you have too much sugar, you, you get into problems. And so the, 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 the biggest song that came out after uh, Sugar Sugar was by a version from Saccharin, which is an alternative to sugar. And they put Sugar Sugar out as well. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Wally. Yep. All I'm going to say to you, it's been a pleasure talking to you about bubblegum music. Yep. As I said, we've covered the years 1967 to 72. Yep. And I'm a big fan of bubblegum music like you are as well. Yep. People forget that bubblegum still lives on to this day. It's the most commercialised form of music you can have. And you'll find that the medium hasn't gotten lost. It's just improved to such an extent that it's an acceptable form of music, even though the roots were some, somewhat subjective. Well, they were good time, happy songs. Good time, happy songs. And that's what people remember from back then. Good yeah. time, happy songs. Yeah. They had organ riffs. Yes. They had repetitive choruses. Yes. They sang like around children's uh, nursery rhymes. Yes. And basically, I don't know, but I know when Simon Says came out, that song, that everyone was actually doing Simon Says the game. Yeah, it was a happy form of music and an audience participates music and uh, it just couldn't fail. The only problem it probably lacked was substance, but... In hindsight, uh, it, it lives on. Well, I can say thanks for being, us, being with us here on EPS TV, and we look forward to seeing you again. All the best. All the best.